So, irreversible injury to cells leads to cell death, and there are two different types of cell death. Um, the, number one being necrosis, which is pathological, and is the body's method to remove severely injured cells. The second one is apoptosis, which can be pathological and physiological, and it's to help maintain the normal function of tissue, so it removes cells that aren't following the usual business. This is very important in removing precancerous cells. So, to start off with, we'll talk about necrosis. This is a form of cell death in which the membrane falls apart and cellular, cellular enzymes are leaked out, ultimately digesting the cell. And it elicts uh, in, in acute inflammatory response and attracts neutrophils. So there's some key morphology to necrosis. So the first one being membrane blebbing um, and cytoplasmic changes. So there's an increase of eosinophilia, which is a, causes a decrease in cytoplasmic RNA and denaturing of plasma proteins, resulting in larger pink stains when you stain with eosin. A more glassy homogenous appearance due to the loss of glycogen particles. It's often vacuolated due to the enzymes digesting organelles. And there are myelin figures present, which are a rolled up or scroll-like arrangement of the lipid bilayer within the cells. Um, it sort of resembles a myelin sheath for the nerve. That's why it's called a myelin figure. That's sort of like summarised a bit there. Um, another really key morphological change in necrosis is nuclear changes. So if there are three patterns, all due to the chromatin and nuclear breakdown. Um, they all have fancy terms as well that I'm gonna. I'm not wrote down because I can't say, but I can't. That I can't spell, but. I not wrote down the fancy terms because I don't think I can spell them, but I can't say them either, but I'm going to try. So the first one is karyolysis, car which is nuclear fading. So there's chromatin dissolution due to the action of DNAases and RNAases. The second one is pykinosis, which is nuclear shrinking, as the DNA condenses into sort of a shrunken mass. And then there is karyohexis, which is nuclear fragmentation. So the nuclear membrane ruptures and the nucleus then undergoes fragmentation. Uh, this then leads to anuclear necrotic cells, so dead cells without a nucleus. There's also, as well as there being different types of cell death, there's different types of one type of cell death. <laughs> so there's six different types of necrosis. I'm not going to go into too much detail. There is a huge table that I made here. Feel free to screenshot it and read through it if you like, but I'm just going to tell you what they are. So there's coagulative necrosis, liquefative necrosis, caseous necrosis, fat necrosis, fibroid necrosis, and gangrenous necrosis. The next type of cell death that we'll talk about is apoptosis. This is a pathway of, of cell death in which the cell activated enzyme in which the cell activates enzymes that degrades the cell's own nuclear DNA and nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins. It's tightly regulated via something called a suicide program using specific genes and results in fragmentation of the nucleus and DNA. Blebs form and apoptotic bodies are released which are phagocytos, but there is no sort of inflam inflammatory response. There are two different pathways for apoptosis. So there's the extrinsic death receptor pathway, which if I was a scientist, like whenever this was invented, I so would have picked that name. That is such a good name. Who would pick the death receptor? It's such a good name. Um, this is, so this can be seen sort of here. So you have your death receptor uh, on the in the membrane uh ligand comes along binds to it activates it this uh induces a complex called the death inducing signaling complex which then activates capsase which causes endonuclease activity leading to dna fragmentation adds cytos cytoskeleton breakdown the second mechanism is the intrinsic mitochondrial pathway, which is when the proteins regulating the mitochondrial permeability become imbalanced, causing the release of cytochrome C, which activates capsase, which then causes endonuclease activity and the cytoskeleton breakdown. 
So, to summarise, in comparison of necrosis and apoptosis, necrosis, there's an enlargement of the cells, while in apoptosis, there is a reduction of the cells. Um, in necrosis, the chromatin and nucleus sort of clumps together, while in apoptosis, it fragments. Uh, the plasma membrane in necrosis is disrupted due to blebbing, while in apoptosis, it remains intact, but there is membrane budding. I'm sorry, I'm just so bugged up. <coughs> In necrosis, the organism swells and there's lysosome enzymatic digestion resulting in leaky cells, while in apoptosis, the cells remain intact but may release apoptotic bodies. In necrosis, there's usually adjacent inflammation, while in apoptosis, there's no inflama inflammatory response. And necrosis is always pathological, while apoptosis can be physiological and pathological. And it can be summarised sort of visually here.